When it comes to luxury MPVs, we Filipinos have pretty limited choices. We have the long-standing Toyota Alphard, and maybe we can even include the Toyota Hi-A Super Grandia Elite. Then we have the uber-expensive Lexus LM. But finally, there is a new contender in town, and it is this van right here. This is the 2024 GAC M8 in the top-of-the-line GX Master trim. And in this video, we're going to be answering two questions. Number one, is this a good luxury MPV? And number two, is it better compared to a Toyota Alphard? From the outside, at first glance, you can easily tell that the Chinese, they really love chrome you will not lack chrome at the very moment you look at this vehicle. There's a nice trim piece right there by the bumper, which is the Master. Remember, this is the GX Master. The lighting assembly too is equally as large. And it's not only like this, right? Including this portion right here by the grill, that's also an LED strip. And you can even make it do a light show. Now on the side of the GAC M8, cool things right here. First of all would be the acoustic soundproof glass. So this windshield, yep, that's acoustically soundproof. This front uh, row, that's also soundproof. And then this rear one, the second row, that's also soundproof. And you can really tell the difference because this third row right here, that's not soundproof. So if we knock on these two simultaneously, first the second row, then the third row, sounds so much more hollow. Now, for the size of this vehicle, this is a properly huge van. It's about seven inches longer compared to a Toyota Alphard and 1.7 inches wider too. The wheelbase, it's also longer. So if you know anything about physics, you know that the longer the wheelbase, generally the more comfortable the car would be. Now, for the wheels over here, so there's more chrome on it, no surprise there. These are 18-inch rims wrapped in Michelin Primacy 4 tires. And if you look at the center cap, they're all upright, right? We didn't like fix the car in a specific way. It just is upright because this one has those permanently balanced center caps, just like what you would get with a Rolls-Royce. The rear of the JC M8 is also equally as striking. You have like these uh, lights over at the back with a huge light bar. The side lamps too, they look like they're claws or fangs. And if you look over here at the top by the small winglet, there's even a camera over there. I'll tell you what that is for later on. If you look by the bumper too, it also says master just like the front bumper. And the exhaust pipes, they are all hidden so you don't really see anything here at the back. Now let's open up this tailgate and it is powered. And since it is pretty big, just give it some time to go up. And once that is up, you'll see that space is actually not bad. Again, remember the size of this vehicle, right? You can still put a couple of smaller luggages in here. But if you want to expand your storage space, it's also so much better compared to the Toyota Alphard's ancient mechanism of folding over to the side. This is a very simple pull and tumble. And yes, you can do that for both of these seats in a 60-40 split. Bear with me right here. There you go. Just like that, and you can call it a day. So what is powering this big luxury MPV? Well, what you have is a pretty surprisingly tiny engine. This is a 2-liter turbocharged gasoline engine making 250 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque compared to an 8-speed conventional automatic transmission. Power-wise, it's about the same as the Toyota Alphard, but uh, in terms of fuel economy, since this is not a hybrid, you're looking at only around 6 kilometers per liter inside the city and 13 kilometers per liter on the highway. But does that really matter? I think to most people who buy these luxury MPVs, uh, fuel economy isn't really a big factor, but it is a factor nonetheless. I know by now you're very excited about the rear seats, but you know, let's add a little bit of a suspense right here. Let's start off with the front seats. First, we check the door thud. Hmm quite nice. The interior, it is a very modern interior. You have a dual screen setup and these screens are just massive. I'm talking about 12.3 inches big for your digital instrument cluster and 14.6 inches big for your center touch feed. This even comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. And because of how huge it is, when you turn on Apple CarPlay and you go to Waze, if you still get lost, then you're the problem because this is just probably one of the biggest screens you can ever view ways on in the world currently. So anyway, going back, a couple of interesting things about this infotainment screen is uh, you can control almost everything right here. You wanna open your windows, you wanna open your sunroof, you wanna turn on your fragrance system. You can all do it through here. And this also comes with your 
360 degree view camera and it even gives you the option of automatically parking your car you can do everything through here now for the rest of the interior materials are truly top notch so the leather covering you have on your dashboard yes that is okay it's honestly not really soft but it's it feels like really supple leather here on the side of the doors yes now that is soft leather too and if you look at your headliner this is just so nice to touch. It has a very nice uh, velvety Alcantara feel to it. And usually manufacturers kind of cut costs when it comes to the headliner unless you're spending for a very, very expensive luxury car. But this one, oh yeah, that is nice to touch. Even the material they use on the sun visors, they are the same as that headliner. Now, if you look at this uh, rear view mirror, it looks kind of different from usual. That's because this is an electronic rear view mirror. Remember the camera I was talking about earlier there at the back by your, your winglet? Well, that is what is projected onto this rear view mirror. The steering wheel, this is about classic GAC. Yeah, it still feels a little bit hollow, which is my usual complaint with these JAC vehicles. But nonetheless, at least it is tilt and telescoping. You can easily adjust it. Now, another minor problem I have with this interior is because of the amount of chrome that they have used. If you don't have tint and you're driving on a sunny day, the air vent chrome and the steering wheel chrome, that kind of sometimes reflects towards your eye which makes it very distracting now let's move on to the center panel so you have lots of piano black you have a wireless charging pad you have two cup holders over here and you have an electronic shifter with i kid you not a fidget spinner there's like a crystal effect in it that you can like kind of twirl it doesn't really do anything but you can kind of fidget around with it you also get ambient lighting in this vehicle which also shows up here by that same crystal so yeah that's a pretty cool gimmick speaking of gimmicks too if you look at this panel right here by the passenger side, there's like a wooden panel on it with a nice uh, landscape motif. I think that is very Chinese. Is it funny? Slightly. Is it a nice touch? Yes, also. It is a very unique touch. Now, the seats, they're super comfortable to 12-way power adjustable for the driver's side. And at least for this GX trim, even the passenger side, that is also electrically adjustable. And the headrest too, you can move them forwards and backwards. But again, only for this GX trim. They're also heated and ventilated and even have a memory functions. On the top, you have a sunroof that unlike the Alford, you can also open the whole window and not just the shade. Now for the premier seats inside the GAC M8, you can finally now check out the second row of seats. And these seats are just super comfortable. First of all, they're a little bit wider in terms of feel compared to the Alfred. And I think that the headrest, they're positioned a little bit better for relaxation. But the gem of these second row seats would be this tiny control panel right here. Because, take a look at this, I can adjust the slide function electrically so i don't really need to like fumble with a lever and just keep on moving like that it looks really inelegant okay so what are the other things you can do right here so you also have this like ottoman function right and that's also electric and at least for this gx trim not only is it four-way adjustable sorry not only is it two-way adjustable like in the base model trim but now it's four-way adjustable so it also slides forward as you can see my space currently is not enough but not to worry i can slide my seats a little bit more further backwards and they also have what you call the boss button so if you look at this front seat right here i can also electrically adjust it via the switches on the side now these seats not only are they ventilated and heated but you also get a massage function and i'm telling you the massage function i'll talk about it later more but it is pretty good now other toys you get back to include this cup holder right here actually there's two but only one of them is interesting because it has a heat and cold function to it. i've never seen that in any other car at least in this price range and you have a couple of usb ports right here you have one usb a port one usb c port you even have extra storage by the bottom and if you look at this here on the passenger side i get a usb c port but the driver side gets a USB A port so GAC is really all about versatility right here right and you also get cup holders that pop out just like that now on top I get an additional even bigger sunroof compared to the front and there's even a starlight pattern over there at least only for this GX trim and you also can control your very own climate control system here from the back. On the side, there is even a sunshade. Now, for the third row of seats, 
Well, this car isn't really meant to carry the third row passengers as comfortably as these the seats, but at least if you don't slide them all the way backwards, you still have around an inch of legroom or so. If you still want everyone to be comfortable, well, you can easily just slide these seats forwards with still while still giving them more than enough legroom. And then these third row seats will then be super comfortable. If you upgrade to this GX Master trim, you even get a center armrest. So really, I wouldn't mind sitting here at the third row even for longer journeys as long as the second row passengers will not put their seats in the most reclined and most slid back mode. Now you ride the GAC M8 GX Master. We're gonna start off here at the rear seats because if you're an M8 owner, chances are you're gonna spend most of your time here. Well, particularly there at the passenger side, but for the sake of shooting this properly without, you know, endangering my cameraman, I'm gonna be seated here on the left side. Anyway, here at the back, it just is super comfortable. So I have my spa mode, right? Which if I engage that, it will automatically put my seat in the most comfortable position, like a zero gravity, I'm basically lying down position and it will also automatically enable the massage function and can I just say the massage that this car gives you right it's so much more palpable you feel so much more of it compared to even the Mercedes-Benz S-Class which I was able to test out a while back this is just so much more relaxing uh, it feels kind of like there's a there's a tiny masseuse uh, there under the seat, which is just giving you some pressure points massage. Of course, this masseuse feels like a novice masseuse, one who's not yet used to pushing hard into your body, but a masseuse nonetheless. Now, if I want a lot more creature comforts right here, I can always just open the blinds over at the top and I can enjoy the big sunroof. And not only that, it has a lot of like these uh, diamond patterns on it, which I don't know, they call it the starlight pattern. It's a little bit gimmicky, but it shines as you pass through uh, trees and you go away from the shadow of the trees. It's just it's a pretty interesting thing to look at. Now, if I want extra privacy, I can always just raise these shades on the side. They are unfortunately not electric, unlike what you would get with the Alfred, but they work nonetheless. Now, the suspension inside the M8, it's just super soft. It's tuned to be as soft as possible, as disconnected from the outside road as possible. Now that is both a good thing and a bad thing. The pros of that is if you really don't want to feel anything from the outside world, just want to be as comfortable as possible, well, this is the car to go for. However, if you're someone who gets car sick pretty often, easily, then you might prefer the ride, the slightly firmer ride of the Toyota Alphard. However, this is only for in-city driving when you have horrible roads. When you're going already on the highway, this car feels a little bit more stable compared to the Alphard. So for long distance driving, and if you're the passenger at the back, I think you're gonna enjoy this car a little bit more. Now, should you also need to get some work done here at the back, well, you can easily just open this very sturdy feeling tray table. And I think laptops of up to like 15 or 16 inches or so, they should fit properly right here. Okay, 16's cutting it a little bit too close, but yeah, 15 and 14, no problem whatsoever. And if you think this is a little bit too far to reach, well, don't forget that you have electronic adjustments for the slide functions of your seats as well. So you don't really have to put in any effort right here. Just hit that button. There you go. You're now closer to your laptop and you can just work. Mm. Excellent. Now let's try driving the GAC M8 GX Master. And I know you're rarely gonna be really driving your M8, but this gives you an idea of how it feels like when you do have to drive it yourself. So. Driving this car, first of all, it is a huge vehicle, right? So when you are parking this car, you might struggle a little bit if you're not used to driving larger vehicles. But like me personally, I'm used to driving like Land Cruiser, so this is definitely not a problem. But when you drive this on a day-to-day -day basis on the road, does it feel huge? Well, not really because the car doesn't feel too heavy. The steering is super light and power is plentiful and also responsive enough for your daily driving needs. I would say that because of the transmission, because GAC used a regular automatic transmission on this one, it's definitely not as quick in shifting as your dual clutch transmissions that they use in their other vehicles. But because it's conventional automatic, it is super smooth, especially in city crawling traffic. There's no jerkiness over here. 
now let's go back to the power right so you can put this car into like eco mode normal mode and sport mode and no matter which mode you put it in when you step on the throttle there is a little bit of a delay but then it goes and you'll be surprised at how much power and how fast the m8 can accelerate it is a seriously decent accelerating van what it has over the Toyota Alphard is because you don't have that hybrid powertrain which although is super refined when in EV mode when the power when the ICE component of the Alphard cuts in it gets a little bit rough but this one it's just smooth through and through next would be the handling of course you don't really expect a big van like this to handle right and yes it really doesn't however what i like about it is that when you have to do evasive maneuvers for example while you're driving at speed and you have to kind of like shimmy your steering wheel or change lanes super quickly this for some reason i don't know what kind of chassis control gac used on it there's not much body roll despite the height and the weight and the size of this however you will get the sensation of yawing which I've never felt in any other vehicle before. Is it better than having body roll? Definitely so, but it just is a very foreign experience to me. Not really complaining though, again, it is better than having tons of body roll. Finally, I wanna talk about the noise. When you are here over at the front, you would also expect these large mirrors and the large windshield to produce a lot of wind noise but they don't the only noise that you will feel here on the inside would or here or here on the inside would be the tire noise i'm not sure if replacing your tires would solve that but as it stands it's just a little bit noisier compared to the tire noise that you will get with the toyota alford lastly i want to talk about the advanced driver assistance systems that the m8 has it just is super smooth you can use this both inside the city because it has traffic jam assist and when you're going high speeds on the highway too it's not jerky at all so yeah feel free to use your ada systems and the m8 as the driver you will not upset your boss is seated there at the boss seat. So how much does the GAC M8 GX Master cost? Well, you can get this van for 3,948,000 pesos. But now that we're here, let's answer the questions we asked at the start of the video. Number one, is it a good luxury MPV? For me, I really think so because not only does it look pretty luxurious and opulent, it also is pretty refined and comfortable. But now the second question, is it better compared to a Toyota Alphard? Well, for me, the answer would be no. It is not better than the Alphard, but if you ask me, is the Alphard better than this? Well, the answer is also no. They really are about equals. They have their own pros and cons. But now, if you take a look at the pricing and the availability of things, wherein this cost 1.1 million pesos less and it is almost readily available most of the time then if you're looking for a luxury mpv right now and you don't really want to spend over 5 million pesos this car is not a loss in tagalog hindi ka natalo dito